Okay, welcome to the Survival Report. Uh, had an interesting thing come up today and wanted to share it as far as the uh, add-on to the Bees for Beginners uh, series and such. Had a uh, colony that was having some problems and, uh, uh, you know, just uh, didn't expect it to be completely gone, but I believe they all uh, absconded, they all took off. Um, had a problem last summer by, uh, we started the colony kind of late, uh, at least for our area it's kind of late, uh, June. Anywho, the uh, colony never really got up to strength like it should have uh, before the uh, before the winter time, uh, partially because of poor management on our part, and uh, possibly I believe also they were fighting off uh, wax moss and possibly also a disease called nosema. Um, we try to do everything we can without uh, much chemicals, uh, but. This is kind of like the fruit trees and such. There's some things you're just going to have to treat with uh, with chemicals. Uh, one thing I wanted to show was this is wax moth damage. <coughs> you can zoom in on that. What happens is these moths get in there, and can you see that close up there? Yeah. The little burrows, okay. <coughs> and they actually get in here and they, and they burrow and they just absolutely destroy this comb. Now this comb is not that old. This is approximately a year old. Some of, this, some of the other stuff I'll show is newer. But uh, they have just absolutely wrecked this comb. Okay, uh, this, is, this is unusable. And you see how it's darker and such like that than the newer comb is. This comb at the top is a little bit newer on this frame. Uh, but this is, this is unacceptable. And there's chemicals you can use for the wax moth and things like that. Uh, my suggestion would be, you know, if your colony is up to strength and doing well, you, you won't have a problem with this. We don't have a problem with this with most of our colonies. You can see how bad this is. Now, the one in, I mean, they just, they just, you know, probably defecate all over the place and things like that. I'm sure a lot of that's waste. And it's just, it's just a mess, essentially, to deal with. Now, back to uh, the first couple of lessons where we talked about the beauty of plastic foundation versus wax foundation is if you know we're in a peak oil type situation or something like that where perhaps plastic is uh, is hard to get okay, or cost prohibitive or it's something's bad happened and we haven't been able to, uh, to resupply okay <clears throat> we could clean this up a bit I'd probably hit it with the bleach solution then let it sit out for a month or so to get the uh, get the smell off, soak it with water and things like that. I know bleach probably isn't the best thing to put in there, but again, it's kind of like this hive tool here. Now, if there's any disease in there, I'm probably transferring it from hive to hive. So again, you'd want to clean that off and such as well too. I'm just trying to show you a little in a little clip today some of the problems you can have. Uh, we saw some warning signs with this hive. I was reluctant to medicate it. Uh, there's a there's a medication called Fumadil B. Uh, that's used for nosema and such like that, and there's other things, uh, uh, check mite and different things like that that can be also used for uh, uh, for the wax moss. Uh, Apistan, I believe, is for for the mites also, maybe not be for the uh, wax moss. But I was reluctant to use chemicals to uh, to try to do some of this stuff. That's one of the things that a lot of people think have caused the uh, colony collapse is the overuse or over reliance on uh, chemical based treatments for the bees and such. So here's another example of trying to do the organic and you know all that good stuff route is you, you're going to have to expect some losses when you go that route. And for us this was this was a colony. This was you know some of this material will be salvageable, some of it won't. So there's a monetary loss there in, the, in some of the parts of the frames and and things like that, but there's also the, you know, $50 package of bees that, uh, that is uh, the monetary loss of it. And of course, if we couldn't replace them, if it was a true uh, long-term disaster type situation, well, that's that much uh, less pollen, uh, uh, pollen that's collected and honey and pollinators that are out working for us. So again, you know, it's, it's, I realize everybody wants to go organic and all that good stuff, and, and by all means, as much as you possibly can, but at least have the stuff so you can deal with it. Uh, Brushy Mountain is not going to be open, you know, uh, six months into the paw. So you need to have this stuff stockpiled. Humidil B, the uh, Teramycin for uh, American Fowl Brood and European Fowl Brood, you know, maybe some check mite strips or the, the Apistan, things like that. You need to have some of that stuff, even if you don't want to use it right now. 
have it so that when something like this comes up and you have no resupply, you can save your colony. Now, if we only had a couple of colonies, say two or three colonies, guess what? We'd have been in hurting now. We'd have been down, you know, as much as a third or a half of what we had. Some of the other clues we saw in here was we saw a higher incidence of little, uh, little sugar ants and things like that around. Okay, whenever, uh, usually if a colony is strong enough, it can fight off these wax moths, it can fight off ants and different things like that. This colony never built up to the numbers they needed. Uh, and there was one of the things that we thought about was uh, there was a possibility of nosema. Um, the wife noticed on the outside here some, some kind of um, uh, odd behavior by the bees and also some staining and such, uh, which, which is a, a possible, uh, you know, possible indicator for nosema. So again, it's good to do the all organic and by all means, you know, we don't just go around and squirt DDT on everything around there. But, you know, sometimes you're going to have to use some light pesticides for your fruit trees and your gardens. And sometimes you're going to have to use that, those apostan strips or the fumadil bee or the teramycin and such for your beehives.